Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, what we speculated, Brian, turned into rumors. We speculated that if there were anything that needed to go was Armor Wars and possibly Blade. Because we've been telling Mahershala Ali, you got to go. Blade, Brian, cannot not be done, but you need not be here. Because this, this is, is that's it. Even Kevin said he called me. Oh, I want to get to that. <laughs> so there has been rumors that Marvel is looking to cancel certain shows and movies. Correct, Brian? Yeah, the, we we don't know all the extent of that, but there's two higher profile ones that have been mentioned that a decision will be made either way, and cancellation is on the table. I'm gonna say this, Brian. This is what's gonna happen with Armor Wars. Armor Wars is done. Arm Wars is done. Blade won't be done in, in terms of we're not going to make the movie. The announcement will be that Mahershala Ali will probably no bit longer be in, uh, attached to the film. That's what I think. But they're still going to do Blade. They cannot not do Blade. So Arm Wars is done so. That's my prediction. Uh, I would 100% agree. Uh, I think this this... This is a project that's had no plan and no home since the beginning, right? This was announced as part of the TV lineup back when we were all about subscribers and nothing else and then we got the sort of cryptic explanation that as they were doing it or putting it together it just made more sense to do it it was so big they had to do it as a movie which you kind of just reeks of bs when you hear that um and then it's we've heard nothing right there's been nothing on this since right like normally you get oh so and so's doing a pass on the rewrite oh here we're casting up the supporting people or what nothing like this project has had no updates. Um, Don Cheadle obviously reprised his role as a scrawl in the ill-fated Secret Invasion series. I don't think there's any steam at all for this project. I don't see the point of it. Why would they give it $150, $200 million to send it to the big screen? And why would they do it as a streaming only? Like it has no, it has no real function right now for them. So yes, I think odds very high. We see Armor Wars wrapped up and forgotten about. Brian, when was that announced in terms of Armor Wars being produced, being thinking, well, thought about? Oh, the series was in the original, it was in the original Disney Plus lineup. It was back in whatever that was, 2019, 2020. Let me ask you this. Do you hear anybody calling for Don Cheers to, to throw his hands up in the air and leave because they haven't done this? You know why, Brian? Because nobody cares. Yeah. People care about Blake. They want to see Blade, but they keep kicking the can around for whatever reason. We don't know what's happening, but it's time to just move on. Let Blade get done by somebody else and, and just move on. Armor Wars is, is just over, but as we expected, it would be because it was just there for all this time. It was but, always yeah. part of some lineup. This is not at all a referendum on Don Cheadle as an actor. No. Who's great. It is a referendum on the part of Rhodey of War Machine, which is that's not a character to frontline big budget blockbuster. It's not. Yeah, yeah. Like people get excited about Rhodey. Why? Because Tony Stark might be nearby. People get excited about Rhodey. Why? Because there's Avengers flying all around. Sorry, but I, I, people don't just look at War Machine and be like, I need to follow the life and times of War Machine. Now, when they announced it as a Disney Plus series, it kind of made more sense because you're like, all right, well, you're going to populate this initial run with a lot of these sidekick characters getting their own series, right? That's kind of what happens in TV a lot of times, the definition of a spinoff. Yeah. But this idea that like, oh, it got so big, so now we have to make it like this huge tentpole summer blockbuster, that's a guaranteed money loser. And I think they realized that. And now they're just like, we don't need as many Disney Plus shows. They're already booked out on Disney Plus for several years. So this thing is just going to fall through the cracks. And I think everyone's going to be just fine with it, Don Cheadle included. Oh, yeah. There's no need for Armor Wars. No. Now, Blade, you're 100% right. A Blade incarnation has to happen, will happen, will definitely happen. It just won't be this one. Yeah. I mean, at some it, point, it, you just have to look at this and say, like, cut our losses and start over. Yeah. But for yeah. Kevin to make that statement, which you're referring to, 
I thought was so unusual. You like he's been, I'm, I'm trying to find the exact quote, but he they he said all the right things all the way through, right? And he was giving you the whole like we don't want to be rushed. We've been trying to crack the movie. We want to make sure it's the right movie. Um, and then like very recently, and he talked about oh, it needs to be R rated. And then he talked, he just threw in like a thing at the end about Mahersha Ali, where he's like, well, he came to us. Like, that was the quote. Like, he came to us. And I was like, wow. I was like, that sound you just heard was the beep of the bus backing up over Mahersha Ali for this project. <laughs> not not he making sent it. Me the the, uh, it was comicbook.com. Uh, Wesley's great. Wesley's greatest. Mahershala is the one who came in four years ago, five years ago, and said, I want to play Blade. Is what this movie's about. And he puts it on him. Like that's 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 a finger. Like right you. <laughs> yeah. Is what this movie's about. Him coming to us four or five years ago. That's highly out <laughs> of char uncharacteristic <laughs> for Kevin Feige to say that. Like, that's not quite Ed Norton, the letter they put out, but there's a whiff of that in there. We should, there's really nothing else to be said other than to move on. Yeah, and if you're a rehearsal, though, I see a quote like that. That's just a confirmation that you're not winning this. You're not winning. If, if you're in a power you're getting struggle your with way. Kevin Feige, like, you've lost. There's just no way you're winning that. You're not getting your way. It started with the phone call. You got your way and you probably kept pushing. And, and it was like, you know, that's not what, that wasn't the plan. I don't think there wasn't any a plan for Blade at that moment. And he just called them up. Right. And so it's been just there ever since because Kevin had other plans. Yeah. But let's move on. Dustin Daniel Cretton. Yes, De Destin Daniel Cretton. Yes. Best Direc director of Shang-Chi. Director of Shang-Chi. Brian, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Brian, in terms of where the character of Shang-Chi is within this MCU. I don't think I said this last time, but I simply just think uh, Simu Liu is bad business for the MCU. And they're looking to move on and get back in China's good graces so they can get that box office. Unless an apology is... <laughs> That's is, definitely is, not happening. Exactly. So, it's time to move on and certainly Destin Daniel Cretton is moving on to other things as well. He's been tasked to direct Spider-Man 4. Brian, how the hell did this happen? What happened? Yeah, this is the bizarre. Doing Shang -Chi. This is the bizarre, this is the bizarre turn of events. So let's let's review. So Destin Cretton makes Shang-Chi as in, in my opinion, the most Marvel formula, sort of true to Marvel formula movie of the post endgame era. It's critically acclaimed, does pretty well at the box office. He then immediately gets the he gets the gig for Avengers Five Kang Dynasty. He sets about working on Wonder Man, and of course, he's sort of expected to direct Shang Chi too. Then things start to go sideways. Avengers movies go through all their troubles. He's no longer associated with Kang Dynasty. Wonder Man has been filmed; it's going to happen, but kind of feels like it's been shuffled to the back of the line. And there's been no mention or progress of any kind of Shang-Chi sequel. So it kind of felt like Destin Cretton was kind of on his way out a little bit at Marvel. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, the, arguably the biggest guaranteed franchise of all, which spans Marvel and Sony right now, is Spider-Man 4 coming off of the $2 billion of No Way Home. They've had a devil of a time getting someone to direct that since John Watts stepped away. And all of a sudden, Destin Cretton is now directing that. Which, which means... feels like we, a big win for him. But you said it perfectly. That means he ain't doing Shang-Chi 2. No. No. 
That's like a, I was, you know, it's, funny, it's not quite the perfect parallel, but you remember at the end of like Batman Begins when um, Rutger Hauer's character comes in the boardroom and Morgan Freeman's sitting there and like Rutger Hauer's like, I thought I fired you. And he's like, you did. I got another job. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like Vincent Crenn did. I got another job. Yeah. Yours. Yeah. The, that one. The big one over there. Yeah. But yeah, wow. no more Song Chi for him. I think we can safely say. Because if it, here's the thing Spider Man 4 is a tough task. He pulls that off. He's definitely doing Spider Man 5, right? Like we already know that. That's what he's going to be doing. John Watts did three of those. So we can safely, although not confirmed, we can, we can safely say that. Uh, Simulu is out. Yeah, I think I think Shang Chi will be reset. I mean, I think I think I think it go. Honestly, like I don't think the only difference really between Shang Chi and Blade is you got the first movie made. I think they're both going to be in that same bucket of we need to start over. Yeah, and that includes our lead. Yeah, man, because we need to make money. And to me, he was just miscast, and not because of anything else that was going on outside you know at first when he was cast i was like okay yeah i like him i saw him in kim's convenience i was like okay but i think just what they did it's not even a miscast i think just what they did with the character uh, and the way they wanted to go with the character was the downfall for me so i think I yeah i agree with you i mean i think I, as i said i still like it better than you do but i think it's also when you see the performance and I think but we do you like it, it Brian, time. because of him or because of everything else around it? Well, that's the thing. I think the two the reason the, the two main reasons I like it better. Well, the three main reasons I like it better than you are. Number one, I don't find the Jackie Chan choice as off putting as you do. You mm-hmm. are because because you were so set on a certain style and format for the martial arts, and I guess I was more open to. I like the bus scene. Like I like the skyscraper scene. The bus scene, right? All right. But even though those are not. Bruce Lee style, you know, martial arts. The second reason is I think, you know, Tony Leung is just too good. As like, I, I mean, like honestly, like I watched that guy do his thing all day, and I think he's amazing. I think Michelle Yeoh is amazing. I think Munger Jong is great. So, so the supporting cast to me wins me over. Um, but and why, then, Brian? Do, why, why, why was my expectation that? Yeah, because he's what? a master of kung fu. I mean, I get why you're making the point, and because they're, I mean, they they kind of bait and switched us with the whole like rumored tournament format that really wasn't a thing. It was like one small scene, you know. Yeah, but Cheng Chi was sort of uh, 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 inspiration of Bruce Lee, right? Yeah, no, I get it. I no, that's, I, that's where it come, that's where it comes from. Yeah, that's where I get it. From. I know why you're you're making the point that you're making, and I would suspect if they do reset it, my guess is you'll get that. That would be my. It's the most yeah, obvious awesome. pivot. It's the most obvious pivot they can make. Yeah. Um, but I think the question, and we talked about it at the time in our review show, is you leave that movie and your biggest question is, can Simu Lu rise from this performance to the next one? That's really the question. And it, all we have to go on is the other work that he's done away from this franchise. I don't think he's really taken off as an actor. Like if you look at him in a supporting role in Barbie, he has kind of a supporting role in a a, a comedy on, on Netflix. I didn't think was very good. It was like with John Cena and Aquafina again, <laughs> directed by Paul Feig, where he's sort of like a it's a comedy, but he's like a villainous guy. He's kind of moving into the like he's always the same guy. Like that's the thing, right? And so when you see that, you're kind of like, I don't think he can follow the Hemsworth path. Like I don't know that he has that in his repertoire. He's still young, but I mean, I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen him transform into something else. And I think Shang-Chi would need to evolve, right? Like we want Robert Pattinson to evolve in the Batman, but we have Robert Pattinson's career to look at to say that this guy is capable of playing things differently. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have that with Simu Lu. So there isn't really a lot of reason to be like, yeah, we're really missing out on a great arc of performance as the master Mm -hmm. of Kung Fu in Shang-Chi 2 and 3. Like, if they were to replace him with another up and coming Asian actor, like I, I don't think a lot of people would react to that. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll just be curious to see what the next guy can do. Yeah. Because this guy is, is just not it. I'm sorry. So, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, Shang-Chi 
and where the future of Shang Chi lies. And it seems like they're setting Dustin, <laughs> Dustin, <laughs> Craig. And, well, I mean, are you excited about that? Like, what did you think after all the people they tried to get to do this? Like, what what was your thought on them landing on him as the the answer for Spider Man Four? Interesting. That's all. Not excitement, but interesting. It feels a little bit like they. It kind of tells me, I guess, they still trust his hands a little bit. Yes. Right. Like, like they're familiar with working with him, and this is a big project, and so they're. They're like, okay, we, we couldn't get anyone else to do it. We, we, we might as well go back to somebody who kind of knows their way around Marvel a little bit. What I hope, Brian, is that we don't get a Jennifer Lawrence performance in Dark Phoenix type of thing from Tom Holland. Yeah. That's what I, you know, I don't. I, uh, By the way, this, we had a, to that point, to that point, we had a John Watts sighting because they're starting to promote Skeleton Crew, mm -hmm. um, which he's directing over at Disney Plus. He, he kind of said it, finally. Like, he said all the right things about why he didn't come back for Spider-Man 4. He finally said it. Quote, about No Way Home. That was such a specific moment in time, and the reaction to that movie was so unbelievable. It's never going to be like this ever again. End quote. <laughs> so Dust Dustin is reading this, and he's like, thanks, yo. You're already setting me up. <laughs> I mean that's but that's it. That's yes. this he's not wrong. Like they pulled off something nearly impossible to make that movie great. The odds Damn. that they could come over the top on that near zero. All right, look at our shows prior to that movie coming out. Concern you talking about concern. We we were gonna be pleasantly surprised if the movie was good and it was exceptional. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerdy Report. The show goes